जय हिंद स्टूडेंट्स हाउ आर यू ऑल आई होप यू ऑल आर टेकिंग वेरी गुड केयर ऑफ योर सेल्फ सो द प्रीवियस सेशन वी हैव डिस्कस्ड डिस्पर्शन व्हिच वाज अ वेरी वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग फिनोमेना इट वाज बेसिकली द स्प्लिटिंग अप ऑफ व्हाइट लाइट इनटू इट्स सेवन कंस्टिट्यूएंट कलर्स सो दिस लेक्चर विल बी द एक्सटेंशन ऑफ द प्रीवियस लेक्चर ओनली राइट सो वी विल स्टार्ट विद न्यूटन्स ऑब्जर्वेशन yes students isaac newton he was the first person to have observed using glass prism the spectrum of white light so the spectrum of white light using glass prism was first observed by isaac newton right we have discussed it isn't it suppose this is a prism and if white light is incident over here this is the angle of prism this is the base of the prism if white light is incident over here white light it is composed of seven constituent colors so here it will suffer refraction rare to dense it will be towards the normal and again over here the rays will travel from denser to rarer so it will bend away from the normal so because of the different wavelengths and the material of the glass prism offering different refractive indices to different wavelengths they will get deviated to different amounts and we have discussed violet color it suffers maximum deviation while red color it suffers minimum deviation so this is known as spectrum of white light this is known as spectrum of white light and this was first obtained by isaac newton using glass prism later on what he did was he tried to split the colors into further colors by placing an identical prism but he observed that the colors didn't split into any further colors so white light is composed of only seven constituent colors another observation what he made was he placed another identical prism in an inverted position with respect to the first one i will show it with the help of this diagram suppose this is the first prism this is the first prism and this is the second prism he placed the second prism second prism was identical the first one and it placed the second prism in an inverted position with respect to the first one then what he obtained was this is white light strips and here it will split up into its seven constant colors i am showing only the extreme colors that is violet and red right here it will again split up like this So here the rays are traveling from rarer to denser. It will bend towards the normal. It will be like this, and then it is like this. So what he obtained was white light emerging from the second phase of the second prism. So what he concluded was this is white light. This is also white light. So what he concluded was. first the spectrum of colors of white light cannot be further split into other colors and second observation which is very very important is that white light is composed of only and only seven constituent colors namely with pure violet indigo blue green yellow orange and red so this was the observation made by newton clear students so as we are aware uh, dispersion the phenomenon of dispersion is involved in various other natural phenomena as well the most important being rainbow it's a very very fantastic phenomena so we'll discuss about rainbow just now <coughs> so students rainbow we all must have seen primary and secondary rainbow rainbow actually it's a wonderful phenomena and it's basically formed of the sky 
during light drizzle or immediately after rain. So the mandatory condition is the atmosphere must contain water droplets through which the sunlight from the sun get dispersed or the phenomenon of dispersion takes place. Right? So rainbow is basically a fantastic phenomenon in which colored spectrum of light or colored concentric arcs in the form of bow is obtained in the sky and for that the back of the observer or rather the sun towards, should be towards the back of the observer and this magnificent phenomena is observed only and only during light drizzle or immediately after it. So rainbow students it is rainbow is a colored spectrum it is a colored spectrum obtained in the sky in the form of a bow in the form of a bow when during light drizzle or immediately after rain right and the condition is when the sun is when the sun is at the back of the observer so this is how rainbow may be defined it is a colored spectrum it's a band of colors in the form of concentric arcs which forms a bow in the sky during light drizzle or immediately after rain and it can be seen in the sky only when the sun is at the back of the observer. So this colored spectacular phenomenon is known as rainbow. Now we will discuss the cause of rainbow. Now students, various phenomena are involved for the cause of rainbow. One of the phenomena involved is dispersion of sunlight from the water droplets suspended in air. Actually, the water droplets behave as tiny prisms. So, one of the phenomena involved in the formation of rainbow is dispersion of white light or sunlight. So, the second cause is internal reflection of light. Internal reflection of light. What happens is, we will discuss it with the help of a ray diagram. What happens is, Light, when it enters the water droplet, it gets internally reflected inside the droplet. It may get internally reflected once, twice, thrice or four times. According to students, there are actually four types of rainbows. Primary rainbow, secondary rainbow, which are very often seen by us. And there are tertiary rainbow as well as quaternary rainbow as well, which involves three internal reflections and four internal reflections respectively. They are very rare to see. Actually, they are formed around the sun, right? And it is not possible to see them because of the glare of the sun. We have to look into the sun and we have to look into the glare of the sun. So, they are quite rare to see, right? So, anyway, in this lecture we will be discussing only uh, primary and secondary. So, third, is refraction of light. Third is refraction of light. Actually what happens is when the light travels from air into water droplet then what happens due to the change in the medium the light will get refracted and once light enters the water droplet then again when it comes out from the water droplet to air again it suffers refraction. So what I mean to say is that the rainbow is caused or it is formed due to these three phenomena. These three phenomena are involved in the formation of rainbow. So students, what is the cause of the formation of rainbow? Yes, rainbow is formed due to the dispersion of sunlight due to the phenomena of total internal reflection 
of the light from the water droplets suspended in air. Clear students? So all these three phenomena are involved in the formation of rainbow. So now we will discuss rainbow in detail with the help of ray diagram. So as I have stated there can be one internal reflection, two internal reflection, three internal reflection or even there can be four internal reflections. Accordingly, there may be different types of rainbows which are formed and there are some conditions as well for the rainbow to be seen by an observer. Right? We will discuss it. So suppose friends, these are the four water droplets. These are the water droplets. And let us consider these are the two water droplets which are suspended in air, right? And as I stated, for the formation of rainbow, water droplets needs to be suspended in the atmosphere. And this condition will be fulfilled only and only either during light drizzle or immediately after rain. And it is then only the formation of rainbow takes place in the sky. And the condition is for viewing primary and secondary rainbow, the sun should be at the back of the observer. Right? So suppose these are the two droplets and the rays are coming from the sun along this direction, like this. These are the rays coming from the sun. And these are other droplets. And this parallel beam of light that is coming from the sun. Is sunlight. Right? So these are the water droplets. These are the water droplets. So what happens is the ray of light travels from rarer to denser. It will bend towards the normal. Like this. And here, instead of emerging out of the droplet, what happens is it gets internally reflected inside the droplet. This phenomenon is known as total internal reflection. And for this phenomenon to take place, there are certain conditions which needs to be fulfilled. This ray should travel in the denser medium and the angle of incidence should be greater than the critical angle for the given pair of medium. So when these two conditions are fulfilled, then the ray will get internally reflected. So here, since these two conditions are fulfilled, it will get internally reflected like this. And then again, ray, it will travel from denser to rarer, it will bend away from the normal. So it will be like this and it will enter the observer's eye like this and this is suppose the common center of the rainbow this is suppose the common center and this is the observer's eye and this line which joins the common center and the observer's eye with the sun that is known as the axis of the rainbow this is known as the axis of the And it is experimentally found that for the primary rainbow to be seen by the observer, the angle which it needs to subtend is between 40 degree and 42 degree. This is 40 degree and this angle is 42 degree. So we can take the average angle to be 41 degree. So in order to view the primary rainbow, the angle fits the light entering the observer's eye should make with this axis of the rainbow should be 41 degree, right? This is primary rainbow. It is in the form of concentric colored arcs. This is primary rainbow. And in the case of a primary rainbow, the inner arc or the inner band is of violet color while the outer band or outer is of red color. Outer ring is of red color. So primary rainbow is formed due to one total internal reflection. This is the one total internal reflection which takes place inside the water droplet. And what is the sequence of colors in the primary rainbow? The inner one is of violet color. The outer edge that is of red color. And the second condition is, for an observer, this is the observer's eye. This is an observer's eye. 
So in order to see the primary rainbow, the angle which the light entering the observer's eye should make with the axis of the rainbow is 41 degree, which is the average of 40 and 42 degree. I have considered only the two extreme colors, violet and red. So that's primary rainbow, right? Now secondary rainbow, what happens is, It gets internally reflected twice. This is once it is getting internally reflected and this is twice it is getting internally reflected. And then the ray gets refracted and it enters the observer's eye like this. And here again it will be like this. It will get internally reflected twice. This is one and this is twice. And then it will enter the observer's eye like this. So in this case, the secondary rainbow is formed. This is the secondary rainbow. And students remember, in the secondary rainbow, the sequence of colors is just the reverse of what is obtained in the case of primary rainbow. So here the inner one is of red color, while the outer one is of violet color. And the angle which the red light and violet light entering the observer's eye makes is from 52 degree to 55 degree. So the average angle may be considered to be 53.5 degree. Average means 52 plus 55 divided by 2. So it will be 53.5 degree. So this is the secondary rainbow. So students, basic difference between primary and secondary rainbow is that in the case of primary rainbow, only one total internal reflection takes place. While in the case of secondary rainbow, two total internal reflection takes place. Second difference, in the case of primary rainbow, the sequence of color is vivgyo. I mean the inner one is of violet color, the outer edge is of red color. While in the secondary rainbow, the inner one is of red color, the outer one is of violet color. Third, for an observer to view the primary rainbow, the angle which the light should enter the observer's eye with the axis of the rainbow, it should be 41 degree, average of 40 and 42, that is 41 degree. While in order to view the secondary rainbow, the angle which the light entering the observer's eye should make with the axis of the rainbow should be 53.5 degree, which is the average of 52 and 55 degree. Clear students? So these are the two types of rainbows which we very often see in the sky when the sun is at the back of the observer and immediately during light drizzle or immediately after rain. Right students? And as I have told you, there are other two rainbows as well, but they are very rare to be seen. One is the tertiary rainbow, which involves three total internal reflections. And the other one is the quaternary rainbow, that involves quadruple, that is four internal reflections. And those two are very rare to be seen, because they are formed around the sun. Right? They are formed around the sun. And in order to see it, we need to see the blaze of the sun, which is obviously very, very difficult to sight. Right? So this was regarding rainbow. So I hope you have understood this concept. So in this lecture what we have discussed is dispersion, that's the splitting of white light into its seven constituent colors. Then I have told you Isaac Newton was the first person to have studied the spectrum of white light by using glass prism. Later on we have also discussed his observations. He wanted to split the seven colors into further colors but he was unable to do so and then he placed another identical prism in an inverted position with respect to the first one and he observed that white light emerges from the second phase of the second prism so from these observations we can safely conclude that white light is composed of only seven constituent colors that is with cure and Lastly, we have discussed rainbow, which is a very, very interesting and fantastic phenomenon, right? So it is basically a colored spectrum, which is seen in the sky in the form of arc, right? 
and it can be seen in the sky during light drizzle or immediately after rain when the sun is at the back of the observer and most importantly the formation of rainbow is due to the dispersion of light coming from the sun due to the phenomenon of total internal reflection from the water droplet suspended in air right and lastly in the help of this particular diagram i have explained the formation of primary rainbow and secondary rainbow and then we have tried to differentiate or distinguish between primary and secondary rainbow so this was the recap of the entire session so i hope you have uh, understood the concepts and we'll continue with the next lecture then okay till then do take very good care of you